Eric Balziner with 9 to 5 Sports, going to be getting to the top picks and the preview of the Zozo Championship. But as always, I'd like to do that quick recap of the previous week. And a lot of you guys already know this, pretty much all you guys probably already know this. 9 to 5 and 9 to 5 Nation had another good week. So you guys just give yourself a pat on the back right now. Uh, just good stuff from the betting card to the DFS side of it. Just a great week and really just continues the dominance of the 9 to 5 betting card. You know, over the last calendar year, 50% of the events we've had a first place or second place finisher. And we narrowed the player pool down to like 5% of the field. So it was just, it's kind of a spectacular run that we're on. And I'm just kind of enjoying the ride. Uh, the DFS side of it was awesome last week. I know a bunch of members uh, had some really good sweats going, uh, GPP sweats going, as, as well as myself. Um, I needed Terrell Hatton to like eagle the last hole to really have a chance to taking down another GPP for the second straight week. Fortunately, just got a par. That didn't really help me out too much, but another solid week. Actually, I didn't enter that much. It was a no-cut event. Typically, I don't like to enter a lot of entries into no-cut events, which really I might have to stop doing because like, out of the last six no-cut events, four of them have been some of my better weeks. And I think that's just because we had the, the strategy nailed down. Really just have to nail the top end picks and then find the good values on the lower end, like Hudson Swafford last week, like Harold Varner last week, like um, Russell Henley like Jonathan Vegas, you know, those guys all outproduced their price points, which obviously helped to have a really good week. But just speaking on it, guys, um, the betting card was phenomenal. Obviously, Roy won. It was great to see. He was the top nine pick in the nine to five player pool, top five pick in the nine to five model. Great stuff there. Colin Morikawa, second place finish, Sam Burns, uh, fifth place finish. Both those guys were core plays as well. So really, any way you slice it, it was a good week. I don't really want to dwell on that too much. You guys already know it was a good week. Kind of just hope this really continues because it feels good. So let's get into this week and we'll break it down for you. So just looking at it, this tournament actually, I don't know if you guys remember it, um, with the Olympics, we kind of nailed that one as well, going back to doing well in these no-cut events. That was one of them. And one of the reasons why I feel like we had a good gauge on what was going on there is because we had the comp courses nailed down. So for that tournament, we were looking at the Zozo Championship when it was played um, in Japan, which is obviously what we have this week. So it is another no-cut event. It's going to be a shorter course, like par 70, really short track. So one thing that we can do is we look at both of those. So we could look at short tracks if we want to, because it's going to play like 7,000 yards. Now it could play more if it's from the tips, could play less. Uh, but we could just look at that if we wanted to. And then, you know, if you wanted to look at par 70 courses, we could factor that in there as well. And this kind of gives me the paints the picture of which courses I kind of want to be looking at or which tournaments I might, I might want to be looking at. So, yes, the Zozo Championship, want to be looking at that um, from 2019. But we're also going to be looking at, you know, maybe the Tour Championship. I think that's going to be a good course, kind of a tree line course, which is kind of what we have this week. Uh, this is supposed to be more of a Parkland style course. The greens are apparently bent greens as well. So you could look at that as well if you want to. But for comp courses, what I'm looking at is going to be the Zozo Championship when it was last played here, so 2019. And then I'm going to be looking at uh, the Tour Championship 2021. I'm going to be looking at the Olympics from 2021. And then the last one I'm going to be looking at is actually going to be the Travelers Championship. I kind of felt like that was the most accurate in terms of how the course kind of somewhat plays, even though it's a TPC style course and it's a really short course um, and a full tournament field event. I kind of felt like that one kind of gave us a good gauge of how this course plays. So those are going to be the four kind of comp courses that I'm looking at this week. And then just kind of looking at that, we can see which key stats kind of pop up in those conditions. Obviously take this with a grain of salt. We're just doing the best that we can with the information that we have um, at hand. So just looking at, you know, short courses um, and par 70 courses, we can see birdie or better percentage, always a big thing. We can even go further here, guys. So event type, if we want to, we can even go further. So let's go to no cut event. That's going to really limit the amount of tournaments that we have, per se. So let's take par 70 out of there. Let's look at short courses um, and no-cut events. A little bit more dated there, but not that much. But let's just see here. So where do your better percentage we see? Par 5 scoring, par 4 scoring. That stuff's all popping up. We do see strokes gain around the green a lot. That's huge. 
short scan approach is going to be huge as well. So those are going to be some of the key stats that I'm looking at. Then we do see total driving and ball striking uh, pop up there. But one thing I want to point out is that when we do look at um, par 70 courses, then we do see ball striking really over total driving. So I'm going to be looking at ball striking as well. Really, it's going to be kind of the same key stats as last week. We're going to be looking at those scoring base stats. We want players that can score. We get four rounds out of them. So, you know, we don't really have to worry about a, a player missing the cut. And that's kind of why I liked uh, Kyle Morikawa last week. Yes, there was the, the membership narrative, but I kind of thought he would start off slow. That was kind of the worry with him. And then just knowing that we got four rounds, though, kind of made it an easy play for him. We're going to be focusing on that once again this week. So let's get into those picks this week, guys. Um, we'll pull up the cheat sheet and just kind of want to throw some another did kind of an aesthetics thing here for uh, the 9 to 5 player profile, just making it a little bit better looking. And then this coming soon, we're going to have a results DB here coming here, results database for the guys, just so I can, uh, you know, show you guys. I know uh, it's all documented what we have anyways with the write-ups and whatnot, but just kind of another tool for everyone to be able to see um, everything that's going on. So ownership, obviously that's not live yet. This is from last week still, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit more. So I do think that Xander Shoffley, I think Xander Shoffley is just kind of the class of the field uh, for this event, guys. Uh, solid recent form. You know, 18th place finish. Some people will say that's kind of bad, but it really wasn't. You know, we'll take that from him in a no-cut event. That's fine. Uh, but what I really like from him is going to be that comp course history. He's the only player that has three top 10 finishes for comp course history that we're looking at. Obviously, he won the Olympics. That's great. Had a top 10 finish at the Zozo Championship here in 2019. Then had a top five finish at the Tour Championship. Xander has been a step. Okay. He's a top rated player in the 9 to 5 mile this week. I love him as a pick, so I'm going to be starting out all my builds with him pretty much. And then Kyle Morikawa, I do like as well. Great stat fit. Um, top, you know, he's checking all the boxes as well. Um, CJ Cup, second place finish. You know, you kind of always worry about how a player's going to respond after a second place finish, although I'm not too worried about that with Kyle Morikawa because, well, he kind of just had an awesome round on that Sunday, so it's not like he choked it away. It's more or less kind of put it all together to have a really strong round there at the end. So not too worried about that from Colin Morikawa. Those are going to be my two starting points for this tournament this week. Then after that, you know, I do like Hideki and I do like Paul Casey. Um, the, the tough part about those two plays is one, they're priced up and I would just rather play Xander Shoffley and Colin Morikawa this week rather than them. One player that was kind of popping up, Alexander Norin. Don't mind him. Um, just, you know, fine recent form prior to that CJ Cup last week. The problem with him is, you know, not not horrible, but not great in TPC style, uh, or not TPC, no-cut events is what I mean. So not the best in no-cut events as well. So that's kind of my worry with him. Maverick McNeely is a play that is popping up once again this week, guys. So Maverick McNeely, top five player in the 9-5 to five player pool this week. And he was interesting. So he did start off well, kind of choked it away at the end there. Um, does gain a little bit of strokes on bank greens. Does gain some strokes in Parkland style courses. One thing I should have pointed out as well is that this fairway length, it is going to be a little bit tighter this week. So that's something to focus on. Like last week, I, I liked Rory um, because he could, get, he could get away with um, being able to be long off the tee. If he had some bad tee shots, it wasn't going to penalize him too much. This week, it is going to be a little bit penalizing. So we are going to be looking at that average uh, strokes gain tee to green rank for fairway length because it is a little bit tighter. That being said, Maverick Vanille is kind of a push there for him, but I just kind of want to throw it out there for you guys. I don't mind him this week. We're going to have to pay out for some players that we don't love to, I think. Kind of like Jonathan Vegas here, who also really looking like a solid pick. Comp course history-wise, pretty good. You know, we'll take that. Um, just looking at it, you know, no cut events does gain strokes there. Do like to see a little bit better putter on bank greens as well. Overall ranks has a top three pick in the nine to five miles this week, which is kind of crazy, but he does take advantage of the scoring situations. Really strong ball striker, really strong in par five scoring. There are three par fives. Radio barrier percentage is good enough. So yeah, I do like uh, Jonathan Vegas this week. Again, it's just, wow, we're going to have to pay up a lot for him. And I don't really want to do that. Although we're kind of forced into paying up for some players that we might not you know, normally want to. Ryan Palmer, I don't mind. Adam Shank, I don't mind going back to the well with. Part of the GPP win from two weeks ago, I'll probably go back to the well with him as well. But uh, a little bit worried about him as a play, but he is a better putter on Ben Greens as well. Um, 
Let's continue to go down lower here because, well, that is what this week is. Like every other no-cut event, it's all about finding the studs you want to pay up for and then finding the value plays that are going to help you get there, help you succeed. Maybe you want to go with Seb Straka, which with course history, uh, two top 10 finishes. We'd like to see that. Um, nothing else that we really love there. Slightly better putter on Bank Green. It's not going to rank out really well in the 9-5 to five model this week. Um, but still top 20, that's good enough at this price point, good enough to take the risk. Not someone you want to go crazy with, but someone that, you know, could get there. Um, another one is going to be Troy Money Merritt, who I kind of like him a lot this week, just at this price point. He's a guy that can get hot. Look at those putting splits, much better putter on bank greens. Okay, guys, that's really what I want to focus on there with you guys. Uh, a little bit better on those Parkland style courses as well. Um, he's a guy that really just, when his game gets hot, He's going to be good. Don't worry with him is going to be a stroke game around the green. That's kind of where his game has struggled. Look at his last like four events. 124 rank that week, uh, 91st, 62nd, and 73rd. Okay, those numbers have to be better this week. If they're not, he's going to struggle. We're not going to love that. But with Troy Merritt this week, the price point is right for you to be able to take the risk. He's a guy that typically can score. He's a guy that typically can have a good round. Um, possibly going to be a good showdown pick for you guys as well, which last week, once again, great showdown. Round two shutdown, had a nice sweat going. That tool continues to be a great tool. So if you guys, honestly, if you guys are playing PGA DFS, you're playing showdowns, I, I honestly think the membership's worth it just for the showdown uh, content. And one small thing, it is automatically updated now as well. So excited to have that for you guys. So you guys can look at it throughout the round. It updates like pretty much every hour now. So that, that's a fun little feature there as well um then going lower so there's not that much that i love i'm kind of hoping that matthew naismith can uh kind of turn it around here uh you know top 14 finish at the shriners kind of just hanging my hat on that um nothing crazy here we're trying to find something we know statistically speaking throughout his career he's been a strong player not lately 6.5 and that's why he's priced here okay once again, just trying to find some values. It's early on the week. We got to figure out where to go. And he might be someone that, you know, kind of interests me. So maybe we go with Sung Kang, who, you know, 2019, he was playing much better. I will admit that. But he's been in some pretty good recent form. Um, obviously, was a strong um, in the first round, 32nd, 27th. You know, we'll take those results. Honestly, at the value price point range, what are you searching for? You're searching for a player that can get you kind of double what his price point is, I guess, if you will. He, pretty much what we want is someone to finish in the upper half of that week's tournament, like Hudson Swafford last week. You know, that's a guy that really helped you out on a lot of your builds. It, it's kind of a safe thing, but also someone that's going to help you with the upside. So Sun Kang at this price point, I do love. Uh, Kramer Hickok is someone you can look at as well. He had a good finish at one of the comp courses. And then just going a little bit lower here, lots of players that, you know, don't really get that many starts on the PGA Tour, but I do want to pull up uh, Wesley Bryan. Um, Travelers Championship comp course history wise played well there. Um, horrible putter on bank greens though, but that's only out of 30 rounds. Uh, just someone that I think could play well this week, but that's all I have for you guys this week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully we have another good week. Um, and remember guys, the NFL content comes out on Thursday as well. The core plays video comes out there for you guys have good stuff going there for NFL as well. So definitely make sure to check that out. Let's have a good week and guys, as always, let's keep gashing. All right. Thanks for watching.